uh, speaking uh, more about this poem, I first say that this is also a memory poem. It's a memory poem, like uh, Shadow Lines is a novel, which is based on memory. Um, uh, even uh, Tara, Tara has a lot to do with the memory. And this poem is also um, is, is a memory. So there are so many texts which are uh, memory text, okay, uh, in your course. So memory is a is a is a very important uh, uh, constituent of uh, Indian writing uh, in English uh, and uh, post-colonial uh, uh, post-colonial perspective. And uh, uh, as a as a memory poem, this is a, oh, this is a poem of uh, a relationship between son uh, and mother and other family members. Now, whose private was or is mother? Okay, so the whole family used to uh, center around uh, a mother, and uh, uh, mother remains a constant, uh, unchanged, and mythical. Mythical. Uh, I'll explain it, and uh, the poem uh, describes the uh, 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 the poets uh, passing uh, poet uh, passing through childhood, teenage, and adult adulthood, where uh, mother remains as a strong connection and uh, a thread uh, of meaning. But later part of the poem. Uh, demonstrates a change in the relationship. So we have to see what is that sharp, drastic, tragic change that occurs in the poem. So this is how poem begins. So first part is more childhood, then uh, one is in the teenage, then mother, we know more about mother and the relationship, how she uh, lives, and then we see uh, the, 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 you know, total change of the atmosphere, uh, an anxiety of uh, a desire to uh, go to the roots and uh, uh, a feeling of standing at the crossroad, that uh, one is uh, standing at the crossroad, but one can't take the route that goes to mother or that goes to the past. Okay. And uh, so uh, this uh, later part uh, is uh, in a way, contrast. It contrasts to what used to be the community life uh, of uh, uh, these people. And uh, <clears throat> mother uh, attends uh, uh, to the past, uh, tradition, love, and care of the community uh, worldview, whereas uh, modern education and uh, urbanization shifts the attitudes and ways of life of the current generation. And so the poem differentiates uh, then and now and uh, concludes how modernity uh, and urban lifestyle, uh, post-colonized life uh, turned son, uh, the poet, into a small man of small dreams of a small life. So this is how the poem ends. So this is a brief introduction of uh, this poem. Now uh, we, uh, I read out uh, uh, this poem's text and then take up, uh, uh, take up the um, phrases that are there. Now the poem begins, Palem Apak Apakvi is the name which means mother. Uh, Palem Apakvi, mother, who gave birth to me. To be a man, how I hated leaving home 10 years ago. Now these hills have grown on me, but I'm still your painfully shy son with a ravenous appetite. 
So the poem here, we very clearly notice that it begins with the, it gives a mother an identity, a name uh, that's important. Uh, generally, you know, mother uh, doesn't have, uh, you know, have an identity. It's merged in the in the family itself. We will know this. This will be merged. So this we call code switching, code switching of language. For example, when we switch between two languages, let's say Manipuri and English, or Hindi and English, okay, for a certain emotional uh, impact or cultural impact. So in the very beginning, to know these two words are a strange experience for uh, readers like us who are uh, who come from a background which is not Manipuri and uh, they have been exposed to English names or Hindi names or you know, names from Uttar Pradesh or these areas, not from uh, the Northeast. So the writer uh, deliberately gives you uh, the two words which you have been which we have been avoiding. Now this is clear that people, I mean, students from Manipur in our college, uh, whose names uh, 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 we don't uh, uh, memorize and keep them in our mind and, and talk, okay? We have to, you know, uh, keep avoiding or somehow pick up the smaller part or something like that. So, but the point here, uh, by bringing two Manipuri words, uh, introduces a language. Okay, that is his language. Okay, now uh, he later goes on that she gave birth to me. Okay, and uh, uh, to be a man, to become a man, how I hated leaving home 10 years ago. Uh, now these hills, so how I hated 10 years ago. So introducing this time, now time is time takes you to the remote past. And uh, uh, it's, it now becomes, you know, everybody's story uh, of India or of the modern world where urbanization um, did a lot of migration. So in a way, uh, it's a story, it's, a, it's also a poem of migration. Okay, now these hills have grown on me that I value these, these hills and I know them uh, well but I'm still your painfully shy son with a ravenous appetite. This is how he used to be as a child. The boy who lost many teeth after emptying your larder. That is, he would uh, steal or somehow manage to eat uh, as much as possible, which even mother wouldn't uh, offer him. And I'm also your dreamy-eyed lad who gave you difficult times during his school days, romancing every girl he wanted, even when he still wore half pants. This is another uh, aspect or side of uh, uh, the poet. You told your children, now this is one part, of the poem, that we are entering the second part. You told your children that money and time do not grow on trees. So this is, you know, a parental advice, uh, money and time. Generally, we use money and time as personified, okay? And uh, uh, that's why, you know, the verb does not, do not grow on trees, okay? Uh, and uh, mother, you know, save time. Mother was very, um, very, you know, uh, disciplined in spending uh, money and time. I could not learn to keep uh, up with them. And the poet admits uh, that he could not, uh, he could not handle both these uh, uh, precious things uh, that we um, that we cultivate. That, so it's, when she says that doesn't, do not grow on trees, it means you can't really renew them every year. So that, that should be there. Uh, money and time are like houses or like uh, 
resources that are not uh, that are non renewable okay not renewable okay and uh, it isn't uh, that i have forgotten what you have come to mean to me though i abandoned much and left a little of myself for others to remember me okay so this is uh, uh, that language which uh, uh, every uh, migrant okay would uh, when would rethink recall or remember uh, one's past and the uh, commitments one uh, made uh, the way one grew up uh, in the family and community uh, by uh, a lot of people sacrifice uh, in making uh, that person and uh, uh, so what I, what you have come to what it isn't that i have forgotten what you have come to mean to me though i abandoned much and left so little of myself for others to remember me i know how you work your fingers to the bone as all mothers do for unmarried sons aging husband and liberated daughter in laws so liberated daughter in laws aging husbands and unmarried sons these are three important phrases uh, so mother uh, the labor of mother the time of mother the money of mother uh, is uh, is a dedicated resource for each one of them but none of them would be able to repay and uh, what has happened now that the next generation is not going to repeat uh, what mother did so the generations before mother were like this but now the fracture has happened the uh, the split has happened this entire idea of urbanization migration education modernity that has brought new ideas and uh, uh, these sons have married uh, daughters who uh, who do not want to carry forward this uh, kind of role that uh, mother uh, carried forward worried about us and you mother worried about us for a long time your lips couldn't burgeon in a smile lines have furrowed on your face on your face so your face is now has furrows the wrinkles on the face you're, because you are you are old now and first signs of snow are on your hair and there are you know first sign of snow snow like uh, your you are you are grown old today as on every day you must have risen with temple bells before cock crow so imagining that uh, uh, today also you get up the way you used, you used to get up uh, in the past uh, with temple bells uh, before cock crow swept the floors and after the sacred bath uh, cooked for the uh, remainder of us i can see you returning every dusk from the bazaar you your head laden with baskets so uh, uh, this imagery this image of uh, bazaar or hat or open market where vegetables and other things are sold and uh, uh, she used to go carry uh, um, uh, all those uh, items on her head in the basket or so so this is here for example certain things it would be nice to actually have some photographs of uh, uh, manipur and some culture so we can visualize it one photograph exists uh, uh, between robin uh, s gamgom and his mother so one website in uh, some other country they are meant archiving poems on mother and uh, so many poems of on mother from indian english writers and one of uh, that poem is uh, by robin s gamgom 
and there they are also accessing photos from poets if they have with their mothers so in that uh, website uh, this they have archived uh, the photograph of uh, uh, robin s gangu and uh, along with uh, his mother must you end toiling forever so this is a question before the last part of the of the poem so now you see how uh, how many parts are there so, uh, so first part uh, here we have we have uh, his mother's name and that has that is a code switching it has a particular purpose uh, of bring, taking us to manipur by these uh, by these two words and then he talks about uh, about his childhood and his relationship with the mother and then uh, the second part deals with the uh, mother's advice to children money time don't grow and uh, but he was not able to carry forward this and then the third part is uh, uh, how she uh, bothers how she uh, works uh, and bothers for all of uh, the uh, family members and there we have uh, liberated daughters and an unmarried son and aging uh, husband and the uh, next third part is uh, that uh, even today she uh, gets up uh, early and she you know, follows the discipline and she listen to the temple bell and cock crow so you see uh, still sun nature all these are the reference points that is uh, the rest watch okay has not replaced so now rest of the people uh, for them the watch the watch is the center the watch has replaced everything um, uh, sun or cock crow or bell uh, of the temple and then we have the question uh, must you end toiling forever and then the last part i'm sorry palam i have inherited inherited nothing of your stable ways or culinary skills i have not inherited uh, you your stable ways or culinary skills your cooking skills or your uh, constant uh, uh, constant you know sacrifice or constant uh, uh, sense of taking care and uh, uh, the stability of time with time and the stability of uh, with space so time and space but migrant uh, time and space are uh, unstable forgive me forgive me for all your dreams of peace during your remen 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 days i turned out to be a small man with small dreams living a small life so he uh, feels sorry that he is not the uh, son uh, who would carry forward uh, mother and her culture her sense of time the stability she had the skills she developed but son or the poet who is a visionary poet is a visionary person but the vision is so limited it's a small uh, of small interest small uh, man with small dreams and uh, living a small life so living a small life so uh, this is how this poem uh, actually uh, develops Uh, in different parts, raising uh, different aspects uh, uh, in it. Now, uh, uh, the sir, I have a question, sir. In the you said in the second part there is a drastic change in the relationship of the son and the mother, sir. Uh, what was the major reason behind that? That uh, they had uh, there was this change in their relationship. You see, uh, uh, it's not the uh, change. Uh, i mean not the personal kind of thing you see lot of changes occur uh, because of uh, uh, unknown or invisible um, uh, factors 
which control us, but we are not uh, uh, sure about it. For example, uh, uh, for example, urbanization. Okay. Now, urbanization, we don't know. It's so such a such an invisible uh, force uh, that our dreams include migration. Our dreams include uh, uh, immigration also, and uh, uh, we live with our mothers. Uh, but uh, at the same time, it's a uh, it's ironical that we want to go. Okay, then. Uh, not only this, uh, there are other um, factors that um, bring that change. Let's say the land relationship, the uh, division in the property, or sometimes uh, you have a kind of uh, feud uh, in the family, and uh, then government jobs or, or new sectors uh, coming up, okay, and then economy, uh, competing, a uh, national economy is competing with other uh, economies. Sometimes you have a regional development. 